and then uh, Bob Osmussen. Hey Rod, hope you're doing well. You know, we've we've talked a lot about this offensive line and you know four guys back and you know maybe the addition of Blake in there filling that fifth spot. But for you as an offensive coordinator, what's that like having such an experienced group that you know, you've really known for three years as well? It gives you a level uh, gives you a level of uh, a piece to, per se that you know what you have. Uh, I've been around these guys now for two seasons getting ready to go on to the third. And uh, so we know what they can and can't do. We know what their strengths are. Um, so we know our football team better than we've ever had, hopefully. And obviously our offensive line with so much experience uh, coming back is something, something, the unit that we're definitely gonna rely on uh, throughout the whole entire year because we have tremendous confidence in that, in that whole entire bunch. And then Blake is a grad transfer, obviously, Brandon and Josh, you guys have had success in both the transfer and grad transfer market. What, what is it, do you think, about your presentation to, to these athletes to, you know, get these commitments and make them feel comfortable in Champaign? Yeah, no, good question. You know, to me, one thing that I'm always looking for in a recruit, whether it's a, whether it's a underclass, whether it's a guy coming out of high school or it's a grad transfer or even just a transfer, is you want a guy that's competitive and it's got a competitive edge to it. I think we appeal to that. Um, some guys get caught up in the numbers game uh, at other schools. Some guys have an injury that caused them to fall in the depth chart and never had a chance to really to show what they have. Um, and sometimes we can provide a platform that gives these guys an opportunity to go out and show exactly who they are. And to me, when you get guys like that, and when you talk, you got to do your research. You got to talk to them. You got to find out who they are, and you got to identify them. And when you find out that they're, if they're a competitive person and they're, they're self-driven internally, those are the best ones. And for those guys, got something to prove. They want to come here. They understand this is their second chance, uh, and they probably work harder than they've ever worked in their life because it's important to them. And that's what you look for. Um, for, for a kid. Now, not every one of them work out. You know, there's, there's ones I'm sure that won't, but we've been fortunate so far. We think we've been pretty good as far as in our valuation. And, uh, you know, those guys, once again, we'll keep on looking at that transfer market as well because that's been good to us. Thanks, Rod. Hey, hey Bob. Coach. Go ahead, hey, Bob. Yeah, I uh, Coach, got a couple for you. Uh, first of all, Brandon Peters, I know it's early, but how does it look the first few days? Can you tell he's been working hard during the offseason? Yeah, he's been he's been sharp. He's been looking. He looked like he did towards the end of last year, and uh, you know he's been he's been on point with his throws, decision making so far for the first three days. You can tell he's comfortable. He understands what we're doing, and uh, he's in a different level right now than what he was last year at this time. Much different. So excited about his progress. Plus, he had his body in great shape. Um, you know, he's always been a very mature, level-headed young man. But to me, he's at another, 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 another level right now mentally and, uh, and physically as well. So excited about where he's going right now. The other one is, Coach, I know coaches like to talk. Um, they kind of like the gossips. Um, have you had contact with some of your friends in the business? Kind of what are you guys talking? Is there kind of an ongoing conversation amongst you and your friends in the business? Yeah, well, we all want to play. I mean, everybody, we're a coach, right? We're a coach. We do this for a living. Uh, you know, God, God bless my wife. I can't do anything else. I can't build a house. I can't fix a car. I mean, I'm pretty useless besides coaching football, so I better be good at that. Um, and but when you don't have the opportunity to do that, it, it's, it kind of leaves you aim, wondrously aiming sometimes as far as aimlessly thinking, okay, what do we do? And, um so that's probably the fear. The fear of you want to be able to coach. You want to be able to have to impact kids' lives and do what you do. Um, so it's always the fear of the unknown. But at the same time, Bob, you know, I try to dwell in, in the positive side. I try to. Ha I, I, I'm a. I'm a person of faith, and I just think things things are going to happen for a reason. And there's a, it's meant to be. If we're meant to play, then we're going to play. Uh, if we're not, there's a reason. But there will be another day that we will play. So I don't know. That's not in our hands. All we can do is prepare every day and get ready for this season. Thanks, Mike.
Okay, we'll go to Gavin and then uh, Jeremy and then Alec. Rod, it's obviously tough to have any real evaluations without pads and just a couple practices, but I'm curious of how you're feeling about the running back position right now with all those guys in the mix. Yeah, I think Coach Bellamy's repping about 27 of them out there right now. It seems like there's a long line of them. <laughs> there's a bunch of them. But they're doing good. They're all looking real well. And uh, now, take that for what it's worth. We're, we haven't banged anybody. We haven't tackled or, or any thud or anything. But, boy, they look, they look good in their shorts and their, in their jerseys and their helmets, you know. Uh, they're all going the right direction. Uh, really like the leadership that, that Mike's providing with those guys. And uh, – so far, so good. I've been very pleased with him. You haven't really uh, had a fully healthy Mike Epstein to work with uh, so far, it seems, at least, um, in your time at Illinois. What, how important is he, you know, at, at full strength? How dangerous of a back is he? Great question. Mike, I think Mike is different. Uh, he's different when he's, when he's healthy. And uh, he makes us different. He makes us complete. Uh, he's that back that – in my opinion, they can run between the tackles. He can even get outside. He's strong, physical. He can pass protect. He's really good with the ball in his hands in, in, in uh, route receiving as well. So, um, you know, Mike's, Mike's a complete back. And, uh, you know, I think we're a better football team when Mike Epstein's healthy. Yeah, and then, uh, you know, you, you got a chance to kind of see Chase Brown last year after he was declared eligible and use him just a little bit. What do you think he brings to the table and uh, how maybe does he contrast with Mike? I, I've been, I've, you know, it's been interesting you ask me that because he's a guy that obviously we want to get a better look at. And uh, Chase is a, is a good looking young man, runs really well. Um, once again, we're not in pads, so it's, you're kind of, it's kind of like a beauty contest right now, right? Everybody looks pretty right now. So uh, but what happens when the bullets start flying, that's when, the, when everybody will separate, separate themselves. But right now, I've been pleased with his progress. And he seems like he's He's uh, really studied his role in terms of his responsibilities of running back, so he's not busted, which is a huge part. That to me, that's the biggest, that's the biggest stride that we've made as well. Not just the running back, but every position. There's not as many mistakes right now they're mentally going through. Everybody kind of knows what they're doing is. So practice is operating a lot more smoother. There's no balls, not as many balls on the ground. Last few years we had more balls on the ground than a a damn wreck grocery store, for God's sake. But this year, it's been pretty good so far. Thanks, Rod. Good to see you again. You too, man. All right, Jeremy, Alec, and then Robert Rosenthal. Hey, Rod. Hope you're well. Um, okay. Brent, yeah, Brandon isn't a very self-promoting guy. Doesn't talk a lot. Um, didn't yeah. do any interviews, and interviews anything like that. Um, I, I know that he's got a swagger to him, but – what, does that have an impact at all when Brandon just kind of carries himself that way as opposed to being the guy who loves being the big man on campus? I think it does. I mean, I, but, but like, Jerry, I, I, it's a great point. Uh, but I also tell every quarterback in our room, be yourself, right? Don't try to – if you're not a rah-rah guy, don't try to be that because you'll sound fake. You'll come off fake. Guys will know. They see right through that. Your teammates will be the first one to see a, what they call a buster, right? The guys, the guys that are fake. So – you know, be yourself. And that's what Brandon is. And I think the way Brandon handles himself, he shows, he does, he, he, he provides leadership through his work ethic, right? But when Brandon does speak, boy, everybody listens to him. You know what I mean? Because he's a man of few words, but when he does speak, he's got everybody's ear because of the respect that he's commanding that he, he's gotten from everybody else. So, um, you know, I've seen different type of leadership styles. I've seen the raw raws. I've seen now Brandon. I've had a kid named Anu Solomon at, at, at Arizona. It was kind of a subtle – you know, not not as not as talkative type guy. You know, to me, it's, are they effective, right? Can you lead people? Or can you get people to follow you? That's what it all comes down to. And, and this team believes in Brandon Peters. Is there anything you have to do different as an offensive coordinator if you don't have the rah-rah guy uh, as a quarterback? Yeah, well, I, I got to watch myself. <laughs> you know, I got to make sure I'm the cool one I'm around because, you know, sometimes I'm the one that's kind of, off kilter with him because he's so cool, you know, and uh, he's good for me, to be honest with you. Um, but, you know, I, my job is to make sure, well, I tell Brad all the time, my job is to take you where you can't take yourself. So I'm going to try to get them out of their comfort zone. I'm going to try to, you know, get under their skin a little bit, particularly in practice. I want practice to be harder than hopefully what the games are. You, you say that, but I'm talking about mentally. 
you know, so that they're completely prepared by the time they get there on game day. Thanks, Rod. Yep, thank you. Okay, hey, Alec, Robert Rosenthal, and then Marley. Hey, Rod, good to see you again. Um, I know you spoke a little bit about the running backs and how it's it's a beauty contest, right? But what kind of things are you looking for um, in, term, in determining your depth chart right now through these first couple of days? Well, to be honest with you, we're not – I, I, we're not setting the depth chart right now. You know, there's got to be a starting point. There's got to be a group that goes out, and that'll be the guys that probably had the most experience right now. Uh, but at the same time, you know, the depth chart won't take care of itself till we get through, till we get deeper into camp. And we're actually going against live bullets. That's when you can really tell. And that's, that's not just running back. That's quarterbacks. That's every, that's every position. That'll separate itself. That'll tell you the guys that are, that are ready to play on – on Main Street, and the other guys that play on State Street. So you, you'll figure out the two uh, as camp goes on. So no, no big rush there. We got time. In terms of Reggie Love, obviously he's coming off of a couple of foot injuries. Um, what kind of things have you seen from him in these first couple of days? Really impressed with Reggie Love. And uh, super, super excited. This kid's got a great feel to him. Uh, you know, we, we've been teaching our techniques, our, our, our mesh points, our tracks, you know, the vision, who they're reading, a certain read. And Reggie's just got a really good feel for our run game. And uh, it's a natural feel. You, you could tell he's you could tell he did some of it before, uh, but he's he's natural with it. He's a good looking kid, he's thick, he can run. Uh, I wouldn't call him a burner, but he can run. He runs well. He's gonna be a good, strong guy that can run in between the tackles. And uh, very smart, very smart. Picks things up very quick. You don't want to tell him two times. Tell him once he's got it, which I really like. Do you feel like your running backs kind of all bring a different skill set? And how important is that heading into a season like this year? Well, I, I think I think guys have different skills. I don't know if they're all different, but there's, you know, there's there's got some guys are, you know, maybe a little bit more in between the tackle bodies. Some guys are more. You know, they can, they can run in the tackle, but they can get out in space as well. So, to me, our job is to make sure that we put them in position to, to be able to maximize what their strengths are, right? Uh, Jakari Alexander, Jakari can run in between the tackles or outside the tackle. We also know when, when Jakari is seen, he, he's got the speed that he can, he can make big plays. So, um, key is to get guys out in space somehow, or get in one-on-one -on -one situations, and uh, let those guys go to work. Thanks, Ryan. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Hey, Robert, followed by Marley. Hey, Rod, congrats on your twin babies. Uh, you have a lot more <laughs> options now with uh, with uh, with Daniel and Matter Bebe and plus Luke Ford. So tell, tell me about your your tight ends and what uh, what having multiple different kind of looks there and maybe even putting three on the field at the same time. What that what that gives you. Yeah, well, Daniel's first day was actually today. So today was his first day of actually getting to practice. And to be honest with you, he looked really good, uh, really good. So excited about the addition of him. He, he, he's, uh, he's quite a specimen. He can really run and, and just a very good football player, it looks like. Once again, we're in pads, we're not in pads. Uh, so it's a beauty contest right now. He, he damn sure looks pretty right now, but we'll see what happens. Uh, as we go move forward, but our tight end position to me is has has really gotten has really gotten uh, much improved. Daniel Barker is playing his best football right now. Um, he's he's looked really good so far. Luke Ford has looked really good so far. Three days, but you know he's you can tell he's learned. He's learning. Uh, he's not busted as much as what he used to. There's still some work that needs to be done, but Luke, both those kids are talented kids. And then you add. Daniel to the mix. He, Coach Patterson's over smiling right now a little bit. So I told him when the things go bad, we're going, we're, I'm going to tell him that you're, 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 you're telling him what plays to call. When things go good, get the hell out of the way, I'm going to call. <laughs> so but we, can we go, can we go through, uh, through three tight ends? Yeah, possibly. I mean, we'll see. We're going to, we're going to make sure we try to be, as, you know, um, multiple with our formations and our personnel as we can. Uh, you know, we like to also – no, we got some pretty good wideouts as well with Trayvon Sidney and, and Diana Navarro and some, some guys like that as well. And Josh Bebe, you know, we'll be multiple with it and uh, try to make sure we always try to make sure we get our best 11 in the field. Yeah. Do you lean in that direction where 
say that the you know tight end position is the strongest and you you want to get them where you will kind of switch up your game planning just to get them on the field or do you just look at what the defense you're expecting and and game plan that way well i think it's always robert's always it's always about how you match up against a, a opposing defense right how can you create matchups uh if that's something that that you, you, you can create a matchup in uh then obviously you look at it um, if, if you're better off spreading them out and trying to get people in space and make them play out there then Maybe, maybe, maybe you go a little, maybe more wide out. So to me, it all depends on who you're playing, how you think you can exploit a defense. Uh, but once again, it all goes back to we got to make sure, you know, that we dictate by playing the best 11, right? So whoever that is, whether that's two tailbacks, whether that's three tight ends, whether that's two tight ends, or whatever, you know, we got to make sure whoever the best 11 is. And the best 11 don't mean because it, he's the most athletic. They also got to know fundamentally what they're doing, right? Assignment-wise, it does no good if I have a 4-3 guy out there that can't run the right route, busts every time, and screws the whole entire play. Because one guy in football can mess up an entire play. So we got to make sure we know we're sound uh, schematic-wise as well. Thanks, Coach. Okay, Marley, Soupy, Matt Stevens. Hey, Rod. Um, I know we're living in a very – fluid time right now. So does depth become more important for you guys? Or are you changing anything about practice or how you're preparing guys to be the next man up in the event, you know, there's a positive test or there's the virus that might wipe out a couple guys before game day? Right. Well, we, we try to basically there's protocols that set in by our, our training staff that we try to adhere to. Uh, we're constantly trying to social distance, keep our guys spread out when they're not in. Um, we try to, you know, our guys are wearing masks or face shields. Our coaches are doing the same thing. Um, you know, we're trying to keep our distance as much as we can. I, I tell our guys, you know, I, I'm going, I'm going to coach them. I'm going, I'm going to try to treat like everybody's got it. So I'm going to make sure I'm cautious with like everybody else. Uh, but it's, but it's still football. At some point, guys are going to collide. Guys are going to. Uh, be in contact. So, you know, we just got to do our part uh, moving forward daily. You know, I think our guys have been doing a really good job. And we can control what we can control here while we have them. Where we get concerned is once they leave here, right? And then, then the players have got to take the responsibility to make sure they're in the right area, to make sure they're around the right people. They're not having visitors over, all those type of things. Because so much is at stake here. And Mark, you're right. One person could get affected and affect the whole entire team. So it's super important. And how we prepare, well, we always prepare. We always try to go three deep if we can. So three different groups are trying to get reps. Uh, if one man goes down, the next man's got to be ready to step up. So we try to get as many reps and preparations as we can. Um, but, yeah, so we're trying. The kids are doing a good job. We're trying to bust their butt right now, trying to adhere to all the protocols. So does that become a matter of in practice, like giving the, the second or third string more reps? I mean, how do you go about to, to prepare someone under Brandon Peters, for example, to prepare to be in the game? Good question. We try to practice at a tempo that's an up-paced tempo at times. No, we, no, we didn't do it all the time. We haven't did it now because you know, we're still early, but we will as, as time goes on. And, and we'll, we'll let the ones get four to six reps and then the twos will go in and get the same four to six reps again. And then if we have time, we'll get threes. If not, we go, you know, so we're constantly trying to rep as many groups as we can. But we, you know, we don't walk around. No, we, there's no walking in practice. We're moving, we're rolling, and uh, we're getting as many reps as we can. So we coach, coach on the run a little bit as a staff, and then we really do a lot of coaching in, 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 the, in the film room. Thanks, Rod. Thank you. Hey, Coach. Um, this is John Sapini. What, what did you see in Brandon? You were talking a minute ago about transfers and you use like competitive edges and, and guys who are, are really taking advantage of a second chance. What did you see in him that, that you really liked? Well, you go back and you look at, obviously you look at Michigan film for when he played. That's the most recent film. And he did some good things early on in Michigan. And he, and he got 
beat up a little bit, he had some injuries, and, and, and uh, you know, obviously he declined a little bit in play after he got hurt, uh, but he's playing hurt. Uh, you go back and you look at his high school film, and you see the skill set that he had in high school. You know, we always look for guys, I say it all the time, you want guys, if you look for intangibles, you want guys to first dog can throw the football. That's, that's the first thing you look for. Then you want a guy who hopefully has some dual threat capability, that has the ability to make one guy miss or extend the play. You don't have to be four, four or five flat guy. You know, you don't have to be Michael Vick, but at the same time, you got to be able to extend play. Brandon was athletic enough that he that he, he was uh, could do that. And I thought he was different throwing the football. That's to me, that's what he was doing. He was different throwing the football. So you want somebody who who's uh, dynamic in certain in certain areas. And I just thought he was. The more you watch him, and then you get a chance to meet him and talk to him. And understand this kid, he's competitive now. He, he's, he's eager to prove what happened in Michigan is not him. And, uh, you know, I think that's why the more you got a chance to, to know him, once again, you cross reference with the film you watched. Um, I thought he'd been a great pick for us to, to bring in. I'm glad we did. And what have you seen different? And where have you seen um, Williams grow at quarterback from last year to this year? He's, he's, he's thicker, he's gotten bigger, uh, stronger physically. Isaiah is probably one of the smartest guys in the room. So he knows what's going on. Uh, he was one of the smarter guys in the room last year, the freshman. Very, very smart. Um, he's worked all, all, all season on his throwing, continuing to become a better thrower. Uh, I think his arms gotten a little bit stronger and he's gotten better. So that's just his continued development of, of what being a quarterback or what he can do. So that way he's not a one dimensional kid. And, uh, you know, so I think he just continued to grow. You know, his best football is by far still ahead of him. And uh, really excited about Isaiah to watch him see how much better he can get as well because he brings a lot of things to the table that other guys don't have. Um, right now, we've got a guy by the name of Brandon Peters that's playing some good football, he's playing good football. So, he gets a chance to sit back here and take reps and learn and continue to develop, which is a good thing. Thanks, Coach. All right, Matt Stevens will wrap things up today. Rod, just to add on to that question, where are you right now with how you're evaluating your quarterbacks behind Brandon? I know you didn't have a spring and you would have loved to have had that opportunity to mold those guys, but are, are, do you feel like you're in a better place at quarterback behind Brandon than you were last year? Because that QB2 is, as we know, pretty important if Brandon has to go down. No doubt. Absolutely. Um, yeah, you know, the, the sp that, that's what was so frustrating because Brandon – you know, was, I was one brand. Brand has never had a spring here at Illinois ever. He's never he got here two weeks before camp started. Um, you know, learned on the run. You know, he didn't get this spring, which would have been so huge, I think, for his continued development. Um, Isaiah Williams, same way. He needed a spring. Matt Robinson needed the spring. All those guys, Quran, all of them. But I will tell you this: that. The, the bowl practices really helped our guys. That ended up being our spring practice, to be honest with you. Um, so there's a different uh, air of, of confidence, I think, within the unit. Uh, Quran knows much more what he's doing. He's looked much better. Um, Matt's looked pretty good so far as well. Isaiah's, I mean, all of them have been doing good. The ones that are lost right now are Deuce and, and Josh, the two young pups. But that's natural. So um, they're, they're kind of in that storm right now. But I've been really pleased at the work these guys have put in mentally. And you can tell they're much more comfortable. We're in a better place right now, quarterback. Uh, you're talking about behind Brandon than we were last year. So I uh, really like the direction we're going. A quick follow-up. I know it's no pads, so it's, it's impossible to evaluate offensive linemen. But I was curious if you could tell us what you really liked about Blake Derisati in order to bring him in and what you liked – from him at a lower level, a lower FCS level that you thought could translate to an immediate impact guy on your offensive line? You know, there's a lot of players that play at that lower level, FCS level, that are tremendous football players. And there's certain, once again, you go back, the characteristics you look for in every position. And there's also got to be a mindset, uh, you know, to every kid. And when you talk to Blake, you feel it as soon as you talk to him. 
when you see it in the way he played. That dude went up against Clemson, one of the top teams in the country last year, right? And he held his own, did, did a really good job against those guys. And that was at center, which to me is even harder. So uh, I'm excited about Blake. Blake's got really good technique, really good feet, strong. Um, he's not going to be the most linear guy, but I tell you what, the dude's a football player. And uh, I'm excited about it. Our kids love him. He's, he, he has gelled and meshed with our guy. You would think he's been here for four years with our guy. And uh, he's, a, he, he's part of the family. Love him. And I can't wait to watch him uh, tee it up this year. Thank you, sir. All right, everybody. Appreciate uh, all your time. Rod, thank you.